This video will show you how to solve basic time, distance, and speed problems. We will be using notes for quiz 1A, Velocity. The equation to solve time, distance, and speed problems are shown right here. There's actually two versions of it depending on um, how you look at it. So the top one is velocity equals distance over time and the bottom one is speed equals distance over time. They're essentially the same equations. Um, it's just velocity here, V, is the letter we use in equations for speed. So velocity and speed, V and speed. Whenever I say V, it's basically the same thing as speed. And then the other two are easy. Distance and D for distance. And then we have time and of course that's going to be t. So they're essentially the same equation. For this video I'm just going to use the top equation um, mainly because it's really easier to manipulate and move the letters around easier to write. When you're solving these types of problems there's really only three types of problems. Um, you can, I can ask you to solve for velocity or distance or time. So there's only three types of problems that you have to solve here. First I'm going to show you um, how to solve it by doing algebraic manipulation of the equations um, and then I'm going to show you how to solve word problems with numbers in them. Uh, the first, to solve for velocity or speed, that's actually pretty much already done for you because that's the way the equation is written. It's already written as distance over time and you just plug in your numbers and solve for velocity. To solve for distance, um, the way in order to solve for any variable like distance you basically have to get distance by itself on top and you can see right here we have time that's over here with it so we have to do something about uh, the time. Um, and one common thing that students always think they have to get the they think they have to get the distance on the left side like this but that's not necessary as long as you have distance by itself on either side they're both sides are equal so as long as you can get distance by itself on this side that's fine you would have solved the problem so in order to solve um, simple algebra problems like this there's basically two rules you want to do first of all since there's an equal sign in the middle in order to keep the equation correct and equal, whatever you do on one side of the equation, you have to make sure you do on the other side of the equation. That way both sides of the equation will remain equal. Um, the other thing is you need to know your opposites. For example, um, addition is opposite of subtraction and multiplication is opposite of division. So to solve this problem we have to get rid of the t, the time, on the bottom. And since time is on the bottom, it's being divided right now. And the opposite of division is multiplication. So what we want to do is multiply this by time. That way, it will cancel out the time top and bottom like this. But remember, whatever you do on one side of the equation, you have to do on the other side of the equation. So if you multiply this side by time, you also have to multiply this side by time in order to keep both sides of the equation equal. Now that we multiplied time, this top time cancels the bottom time. And so you end up with this. And you see we have distance all by itself on one side of the equation. So our solution is distance equals time times velocity. Now, the third type of problem would be to solve for time. This is the most difficult of the three types of problems to solve for because since time is on the bottom, it's going to require two steps to um, solve the problem. So just like, just like before, um, time, time is on the bottom, so we need to get that on top first. In order to do that, we do just like we did the first time. You multiply both sides by time. And so it will cancel on this side, but now you see what happens is time is now on top. That's the first step. But we're not quite done yet because um, 
time is not by itself. There's velocity right next to it. So we need to get rid of velocity. Right now, velocity is being multiplied by time. The opposite of multiply is divide. So we need to divide by velocity to get rid of the velocity. But again, don't forget, in order to keep the equation equal on both sides, you have to divide both sides by velocity. And over here, this cancels velocity. And there we have our solution. Time equals distance over velocity. Now let's try solving three sample problems. Um, one thing that will really help you when you look at problems like this is to um, pay attention to the units. Because that's, that's a, um, one way to really find out what's, what, what pro things are given to you in the problem. So a car is driving with an average speed of 10 meters per second. So I see this standing out right away, 10 meters per second, for 5 seconds. How far will it travel in this amount of time? first step is to identify and write down your givens. My givens, in this case, 5 seconds, that's going to be time, and then 10 meters per second, that's going to be the speed or the velocity. Those are my givens. And it's asking for how far, which is going to be the distance to solve this you just write out your equation velocity equals distance over time and then uh, you plug in or rewrite the equation with the numbers in the spot of the givens so I have time is five seconds so that's on the bottom that'll be down here Actually, it's best to just rewrite the entire thing with this as a sort of a, a f with this as a framework to follow instead of writing over top of this. You still have your equation in front of you. So um, velocity is 10, so I'll put 10 here, equals, and distance we don't know, so I'll leave it as a D, and then the time is 5 seconds, like that. So, in order to solve for distance, we need to get rid of the 5 on the bottom. And right now we're dividing by 5. So the opposite of divide by 5 is multiply by 5. And again, you have to do the same thing on both sides of the equation. You multiply this side by 5, you have to also multiply this side by 5. Now over here, the 5's will cancel. Now you have distance all by itself on this side. So the answer, 5 times 10 is 50. And it's asking for distance. And the units we're using are meters and seconds. So the distance is going to be in meters. Don't forget to box your answer. Now let's try a little bit different problem. What is the average speed of a car that takes 10 minutes to drive 12 kilometers. Okay, so we'll, once again we'll all write down, identify and write down our givens. 10 minutes, that's going to be time. Twelve kilometers, that's going to be distance. And we have what is the average speed? The speed, which is velocity. What is the average velocity? We don't know. Once again, um, I'll just write out the equation to start with. Distance over time. Okay, And we're solving for velocity this time. Well, that's going to be a little bit easier. It's already written in the right form. We just write out, rewrite out the equation with the numbers plugged in. V, velocity, equals distance, which is 12 kilometers, divided by time, which is 10 minutes. So to do the math on this, pretty easy. You're dividing by 10, so it's going to make this 12 smaller 
by one decimal place. So you just move the decimal over one spot like that. So the answer is going to be 1.2. Move the decimal point over one spot. And it's going to be kilometers per minute. Kilometers per minute. And don't forget to box your answer. That's kind of strange units there, but we still have distance over time, which is speed. Okay, our last example now. If a car was driving at a steady 50 miles per hour MPH, how long would it take to travel a total distance of 150 miles? So again, we would identify and write out our givens. Givens. 50 miles per hour, that would be the velocity or the speed. 50 miles per hour. How long would it take? 150 miles. 150 miles would be the distance. And then it says how long would it take? And this time we already have distance 50 or distance 150. So this how long is talking about must be talking about how much time it would take. Since we already have how far it went, this is asking for how much time it would take. So we'll write out our equation to work with. Same one, velocity equals distance over time, and then rewrite it with um, the values in place. Velocity is 50, so it would be 50 equals, and then distance is 150 miles, and time is the question mark, so I'll just leave it as t for time. Okay, well, I need to get time on top by itself. So the first step is to get it on top. Multiply, if I, right now we're dividing by time. So the opposite of divide by time is multiply by time. And again, I have to do that to both sides. If I multiply one side by time, I have to multiply the other side by time to keep it equal. And here, the times cancel, just like that. So I have time, but now I have 50 times time. So I have to get rid of the 50. Right now we're multiplying by 50. The opposite of multiply by 50 will be divide by 50. But I, I have to divide both sides by 50 in order to keep it equal. And these 50s cancel like this. Now, let me just move this over here a little bit. So we have time equals 150 divided by 50. And let's see this zero, we'll cancel that zero. This 5, 15 divided by 5 equals uh, 3. 5 goes into 15 three times. So the answer is going to be 3. And our units, we got miles per hour and miles, so the units are going to be time hours. I'll write it like that, 3 hours. And that's how you solve for time.